So here's the outside of the box. I moved it in here in the light. Still have dark days of winter going on here. I decided to do an unboxing uh, video because this box is special. For one thing, it has this tape on it that says who it's from. Uncle Creepy. And this other tape just says another retro faff. And I say faff. You can say faff or I think they pronounce it faff, but I say faff. Anyway, um, I wanted to do this unboxing because this this uh, this box is incredible. The the way this has been packed in order to ship is just remarkable. I've seen the videos that this guy does uh, when he's he refurbishes Faf sewing machines, and the. The best one is the 1222E, I think, because that's the one that I bought back in, I don't know, the 70s. Uh, and it has, and it's, it's 2020 now, and I still use the machine. But I needed a machine to bang around uh, that I, the, you know, I needed to keep the one that I owned at home and not remove it from my sewing machine, sewing room every time I needed to go to a quilting class or, or something like that. So I, I bought another one and this is it. And it's been refurbished by uh, Uncle Creepy. <laughs> and so I'm about to open it, but I wanted to show you. There's a little note right in here and it says, uh, through much trial and error, we find this method of packing ensures the safest results and greatly reduces the chance of shipping damage to your machine. We recommend that you save the box and packaging in the unlikely event of a return or a warranty issue. So if I wanted to send my machine, even my other machine, back to this guy to have him um, uh, work on it, then I could use this box and that's good advice. So you'll notice that there, there's a box within a box here and there there are these little styrofoam things um, that are keeping it from, so there's at least, I don't know, about an inch on all sides there keeping that safe. So I'm gonna get something sharp and open this. Well, I better take these out before I slip that. So I'm going to keep these, everything here, because I now own two of these machines. And, you know, one is, a, one is one I can take to classes, and one is to keep at home. And so as long as I have one that works, then I'm in good shape. Because I like to sew. Sometimes, I'm actually, I'm a potter, but... I don't like to do pottery in the depth of the winter because of the temperature out in my studio or putting my hands in water when the water is ice cold. So in the winter, in the extreme temperature, whether it's hot or cold, I usually come in the house and do, do other things besides pottery. So here we go. We've got, we've got this second box part open, and then we have something here. This says sealed air. So this is, feels like styrofoam right there, but it's kind of, oh, it's shaped, has a shape to it. So here's what's inside. There's the machine right there, I'm pretty sure. And this is just packing. This machine did not have the manufacturer's um, carrying case with it. This just had just the machine. So this is just all paper and styrofoam. Oh, here's the little, here's the, the little flatbed thing. Here, here's the little flatbed deal. This goes on the machine that 
doesn't really look it's got one little tiny chip right there but it doesn't look like it's been used a whole lot that's kind of scratched right there but it's not this machine is like 40 something years old so um it isn't brand new it's one of the ones that uncle creepy has refurbished so this is fast first aid kit right here and there's the picture of uncle creepy on there <laughs> well it's funny that he calls himself down he's he's a nice guy so i'll open this i'll just slice through his face ouch there's probably not another person in the world other than manufacturer maybe but not even then probably who knows more about this uh, machine than, than this guy does. So here are some tools. There's a lubricant. There's some bobbins. This is probably, well, there's some needles and some bobbins and some feet, which is great because, because uh, even though I have another machine with all of this stuff, Oh, it's nice to have extra. And this is the original foot pedal that goes with this machine because this is exactly like my other one. So there's that. I'll set that aside. Now, to get the little baby out of here. They've got it sitting also. Uh, remember this thing. This thing was shaped to the top of the machine like, like this so that it fit right on there. It's like styrofoam or something and it, you can shape it. So I think that's great. And then and it stays that way. So down, down below here is another one underneath the machine. And then there's, there's bubble wrap in here like that. So it, if it moved at all in transit, it was padded everywhere. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm so impressed with the packing of this and the care that I just wanted you to see this. So let's see. There we go. Okay, I'm going to set that. Right there. It's almost like they put little little wads of of styrofoam on either end of this here. So let me turn that that way. So, so I was able to just kind of grab it here. There's a knob there, and then grab it right here. And it looks like there's something under here that that made a little thing that I could hold on to. That was thoughtful. Isn't that nice? This is this looks like it's clean. I don't see any terribly awful scratches on it. This is here to protect that. This machine looks very good just on first glance. There's just a little chip right there, but that's probably from sliding. This is from sliding that flat thing on it because it's supposed to have some little rubber bumpers, and this one does. But this fits on here just like this. And it's metal, so none of that plastic stuff. So it fits right there, and you have this little flatbed to uh, sew on. So this is all good. This is probably one of the best machines I've ever used. And there, that goes. That should usually they tell you to put the needle in the down position when you're shipping something. So that that was up when it got here. But and then here are, you know, they have these machines that are all computerized and oh my god, I've tried to use them and they are just a nightmare because half of the time the button doesn't work 
or because um, I belong to a, a quilting group and we do some charity work and we have machines that have been donated to us and they're probably machines that somebody else got pretty frustrated with and said oh, I don't want this machine I'm gonna do something else this machine is made in Germany it doesn't have it's electronic which means pretty much what it means. Let me turn this around. It says it's electronic. It's got this little deal right here. And what I've been told about the electronic part is that the, the foot pedal is uh, solid state. So you know where these computerized machines have a thing called needle up, needle down, so forth. All you have to do is tap, and you get you get used to this if uh, if you have one of these machines with a, with the original foot pedal, you get used to just tapping the, the little foot thing a little bit, and the needle goes up or it goes down, and you get used to making that work. The big wonderful thing about this machine is this little doodah right here. That is called an IDT. And I don't know, we can't remember what the, what the IDT stands for, but so if you're, as you're sewing, watch that thing. It reaches in there and it grabs the fabric and it pulls it back. So you have feed dogs. This thing has a little bit of tooth on the bottom of it. Then when you want to use it, you just put it down there. But right here on the bottom of this, it has little feed dog teeth. And you put it right there and it grabs, you've got feed dogs under here and you've got feed dog on the end of this. I'll just uh, set it up and try to sew a few stitches and let you see how it works. We'll see how quiet it is or how noisy it is. So I'm happy with the stitches. And I just had to, I just had to um, turn the tension up just a little bit right here. And uh, I like it better with it a little tighter than that. I mean, tighter than it was over here. So this is, but it's making a good stitch. But this is, this is almost like a new machine. There's a little raised spot right here. I don't think there's anything we can do about that. But it's so very slight that if it bothered me for some reason, then I could always use uh, the other one that goes to my other machine. So this is a little stiff, this one right here. Um, it you have to really push hard on it, but that since it's since it's been refurbished, you know I probably just need to get get some of this little pieces run in, run in so to speak, or just sort of have the new wear off of them a little bit. Um, let's see if let's see if the buttonhole thing works this is fancy you'll love this this was such a huge development back when these machines were new and nancy zeman actually used one of these machines on her show for the longest time and i used to watch that show because i was doing so professional sewing for people at the time let's see let's do a buttonhole oh wait i'm supposed to put this on something so let's go back to zero and <laughs> so the the button holder does work I believe I'm just trying it out right now but I finally got my book out and it, there's this little thing right here that has to be pointed up and so I didn't have that a minute ago I guess when all else fails you get the book out right get the read the instructions and so, okay, so I'm going to see if I can make a buttonhole here the regular way. So it's doing the zigzag part. Now I'm going to push this little, there's a little button on the side right here. And you just, when you get to the end of the buttonhole where you want to stop it, you just push that. And it does a bar tack and then you let it go and it, it just goes backwards the foot up, I'm going to turn this to buttonhole, and then let's try another one. 
and I'm going to reduce the stitches a little bit. That'll probably help. So there goes the zigzag part on one side, and then you push this, and it's supposed to go. Yeah, I just had too many, and then you hit it again for the bar tack at the end, and then some locking stitches. So there's a beautiful. Uh oh, found it hung up on there. Ah, no wonder. Okay, so. Isn't that cute? It's a baby buttonhole, but a buttonhole nevertheless, and it's perfect. That is just beautiful. Ta-da! I'll turn the I'll turn this dial back to center, and then let's do let's try a zigzag stitch just for heck of it. Just for kicks and giggles, gigglies. So far, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so we're going to do ziggy zaggy. And we're going to go backwards doing ziggy zaggies. Perfect. Perfecto. Um, what else does, what other trick? Let's try one of these and see if it'll do a, like a blind hem stitch that all you have to do For, for a blind hem, all you have to do is punch one of these, and to release them, you just hit that. But you've got several fancy stitches here. But there's the blind hem stitch. Oh, no, that's the blind hem, I think. Oh, what happened here? That button got stuck in there. Okay, so let's hit that one. Okay, there's the blind hem. Try this. Da Perfect. See, there's your blind hem, blind hem stitch right there. That's nice. All right, that works. So let's see. That released them all. This button releases all of these things. Okay, well, you know what? I think I've run it through just about everything that I need for it to do, and and it does it. So um, it isn't new, and you can tell it isn't new. Some of the some of the things on it are kind of stiff, like this button up here is stiff, and it kind of got stuck underneath the case right there for a minute. Um, and I can, but I can live with that because I did, I was able to get it back up. And the IDT, you know, the reason I bought this machine in the first place was because of this IDT. And that is the reason that I bought this one so that I would have a machine to bang around going to classes and stuff. So, um, so this is, this is a good thing. I'm glad I got it. Thank you, Uncle Creepy. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for watching, and I'm going to sign off now and go get some sewing done. So talk to you later. Bye-bye.